close to. Good afternoon, everybody. As he said, my name is Pam Fry, and I'm co owner and founder of the Home Capital Management Group and Keystone Readiness Strategies, which is located over on 70th Avenue in Delbro. And I was happy to be able to step in here. Um, for the other company today, because I really I'm passionate about this information. Although um, I'm not a fiduciary company, but because of my role as a financial advisor in five areas that Keystone focuses on, we are every day, every week, every month, we see that um, how important it is that the leg of estate planning when you are retired or even before, because we see families fractured, we see all kinds of things happen all the time. So this is actually one of our five key pillars that we focus on. So on the back of the information sheet that you were given, and I brought this about me, not to be about me, but this sheet right here, you're thinking, well, God, why did Jay call him? This really is her area. Well, I'm telling you, the five key areas that we focus on are right here. Income planning, investments, tax planning, health care. And what is that last one? Legacy planning, estate planning. I'm not an attorney. Don't take anything as legal advice. Or I'm not a fiduciary company as well, but we really encourage our clients to have a solid estate plan, even if they think that it's, oh, I don't have enough money or yeah, you do. You, <coughs> you all have stuff. So, and your estate plan is about your stuff. So everybody needs one, people need one that doesn't work for them. So that's probably why he called me today because um, we see things happen and we work with people and work with different attorneys and different companies and helping people to make sure they have the best and most solid estate plan for them. And one of those areas is who do you choose for a successor trustee? Because that's a really important um, area that I want to go into just a little personal note with me. I've lived in the Valley 37 years. I've been married for 43 of those. I have three children and eight grandchildren. I also serve on the board of directors for a, a retirement community. I'm on the dementia friendly committee for Glendale and um, helping incorporate that and getting it known throughout the valley. And I've been a financial advisor for 19 years. I am a fiduciary, but not in the light that we don't um, help with the estate plan distribution, there are different kinds of fiduciaries. And the word fiduciary means that you, at least for me, it's a license that I have to have as a financial advisor. It's either the number 65 or 66. And um, we take on a fiduciary obligation with that license. And for us, it's absolutely having to do the right thing for the client. You, we have to put your interests above our own, and we are held to a higher standard of care. So although I am a financial or a fiduciary in that capacity, I'm not as far as being a private fiduciary company or a corporate fiduciary company that would help you with your estate. So, but I think it's very, very important. I always like to add a little humor in. And in a handout, yeah, you know you smile just a little bit when you saw this. And it's a garage full of junk for those of you who can't see. And it's filled to the brim. And there's an elderly gentleman standing there with, um, with his son. And he said, one day, son, this will all be yours. Um, <laughs> and we, we've all been there. And, and one thing I've noticed is that in my parents' generation, who are both deceased and perhaps yours, that thing, that trinkets, that... Um, Make bracelets or uh, china or glassware or whatever it is. It means a lot to us, but to our children, grandchildren, it's really not important to them. 
So um, sometimes we become a little offended when nobody wants that stuff, but that's just something to to um, keep in mind. So I always like to have a little humor when I'm talking. But one of the things that I really wanted you to think about is do you know the difference between a private fiduciary company and a corporate fiduciary company? I spoke to one of my friends who actually is part of a private um, fiduciary company this morning, and I said, tell me what you think, you know, some messages that I should share with these folks today. And uh, she said that a private fiduciary company is one well, yeah, I'll tell you what it's not. It's not like the Bank of America Trust Company or the Schwab Trust Company. Or we actually work with a corporate fiduciary called Dunham and Associates. We work with Crawford and Associates. And the corporate fiduciaries can be really great at the distribution of things. But the private fiduciaries, and there are several here um, in the Valley, they can also serve as your advocate. They can be your power of attorney, they can be your successor trustee, and they can be your personal representative. And you kind of have a personal relationship with this company. They know you really well, where maybe a corporate fiduciary would not have that relationship with you. But that's something you want to keep in mind when you're choosing. So I would say that for most people, maybe a private fiduciary company would be um, something that you would really want to consider. And you want to have that relationship with, you, with them where you know they, where they know your wants and your needs. And, and uh, again, have that personal relationship. You need to call a fiduciary. Fiduciary, yes, yeah. I will. I yeah. actually... I looked up an article as I was getting ready to come out here, and I can share this with you too, but it's on mature money. And it said, a fiduciary, it's, what is a fiduciary? A fiduciary is a person who is trusted to act in the best interest of another person in a high stakes situation. And that almost in, always involves money. The fiduciary assumes responsibility to carry out the instructions in a written or appointing documents where appropriate and allowed by the law to use substitutive judgment or the best interest standard to handle the person's affairs. So, um, are they really? Is that I just it? muted them. <laughs> oh, so I guess what we're talking about is when you have a trust or a will and a state plan, where does a fiduciary come in? When you want to name someone as your successor trustee who is going to distribute your assets and carry out your will, this is the capacity that we're talking about a fiduciary today. Now, most of us have that alpha child that feel it's a real honor to be named as mom or dad's successor trustee. They don't really have a lot of experience in that, but normally we rely on somebody like that, one of our children. Do you see any issues with that? Oh, yeah. Quite often, and never say never, even if your family gets along really, really good, never say they won't quarrel, never say they won't fight over things, because... What happens is when you name someone like that to be your successor trustee, they take on a fiduciary responsibility that maybe they didn't understand and maybe they don't want and maybe they don't even understand that they are now a fiduciary by law and have to carry out your wishes. And sometimes in the distribution, most always something is challenged like Oh, mom didn't really mean that. She told me she wanted to have X, Y, Z. Then there becomes um, tension and friction in the sibling who's been named successor trustee with the siblings, with their spouses. And I've had experience in this. I was sharing with Jay. I come from a fractured family, not through divorce, but through estate planning. And my 
family, my aunt and my cousins, we have been not spoken for 40 years, over 180 acres of dirt. And I'm telling you, it's, it's just not worth going through that situation. And it's not worth you risking fracturing your family after you left. So, yes. Yes. You can have, which I did just last week, uh, inserted into the trust that anyone who gives Michael a hard time or has any discrepancy, consider yourself eliminated from the trust. Yes, you can put that language in, mm -hmm. and we've seen that, but they can still contest it. Yeah. And if they win, then they're not disinherited from it. Right. But it doesn't stop anybody can contest and, and get upset. So it doesn't stop them from doing that. But if they do lose, then yes, they are disinherited. <laughs> it's a deterrent. That's right. It's a deterrent. Mm -hmm. But you know, you don't, you just kind of don't want to be in that situation. So I'm going to talk about, I didn't find the five top reasons, but I found the five A's of what you want to look at for a fiduciary. And of course, today, I guess I would be talking mostly about private fiduciary companies, which there are many great ones here in town. And I think the biggest objection that I hear for using a private uh, fiduciary is, oh, it costs money. <laughs> they take a percent of my assets. I would rather have, take a percent of my assets and have it paid out than have my family fractured. That's just me. And I'm not saying that there's going to be problems, but I see it all the time. So let's pretend that you're treating a fiduciary today and you can think about the alpha child that you have, or maybe your brother is an attorney or something like that. So the five A's are they need to be able to do it. They need to possess the skills and knowledge. They've got to have attention to detail and not let anything fall through the cracks. And they re need to be resourceful in problem solving. And they also need to be alive and capacitated when you pass. Yeah. And you think, well, my kids are younger than me, they'll always be there, but no, you know, we never know what happens. They need to be affable. What's that word mean? Affable. They need to be able to get along with people. And they'll recognize that it's easier to get things done with honey than vinegar. And they need to deal with many sources of stress. What could be stressful in distributing an estate? Deadlines. Maybe you're not aware of certain laws. If you've got to distribute IRAs, we give an entire class on beneficiary blunders and um, the deadlines that um, are involved with different distribution things. And it can be very stressful, especially if they have a young family that they're dealing with, or they moved, or maybe they have an ill child or an ill spouse. You never know what the situation is going to be like for that person you name when you pass. They need to be available, and we've kind of talked about this. Um, it often takes quite a bit of time to distribute and finalize an estate. And if the estate is going on for a few years, like now we have that 10% or 10-year distribution rule, or used to be able to stretch an IRA out, maybe that's... Um, then you've obligated them to 10 years of tax returns or, you know, lots of different things that goes along with that stuff that they, they might have been able to distribute it, but now they've got a responsibility every year. Um, and they've got to have the right attitude emotionally and physically to be able to distribute your estate. They need to be above board. They need to be honest, straightforward, and professional. Um, and sometimes it's very difficult for families who name family members because there's things that come up. There's uncomfortable situations or conversations that may need to uh, be discussed. And so you've got to make sure that you name someone who's going to be able to deal with that. I know of a situation personally, a situation personally where parents named three children as successor or uh, successor trustees. So these three children had to agree on things 
and then it had to be two out of the three with majority. This state went on. It it was crazy. And actually, the mom asked that she be buried with this very special, valuable wedding ring that she had. And all the, the trustees knew it. And so when she was in her casket, one of the trustees went up and took the ring off, mm -hmm. wanted to keep it. And the other one said, that's not what mom wanted. And she uh -huh. said, but that's a complete waste of money. And she took the ring and kept it. So just those are the kind of things you think, well, my kids would do what I wanted them to do. But oh my goodness, when there's when you're dealing with the emotion of loss and all that goes along with that, and then you know, when you're gonna be receiving things, just sometimes your your emotions and your personality changes. And so just think about what that might do with your family. You want to have someone who's anchored. A major stability in situation to think things through with a level head, uh, to be able to um, defuse drama that might come up in the family in difficult situations. So there's the five A's of choosing. I'm going to add the other one in that I um, talked about earlier. Someone who can be your advocate. Someone who can be your advocate when you um, they know you, they know what you want health-wise, um, all the different things. And you can name your children with power of attorney and, and those kind of things, and also have a, a, a successor trustee be a fiduciary company. But kind of just, just think about it and think what it's going to do for your family. There are many, many companies that serve as private fiduciaries, like I said, and there are the corporate trustees. So I think it would really behoove us to step back and step out of the box. Oh, it's gonna cost money. Do you know whoever you name as your child or brother or sister, whoever it is, they are have a right to some compensation for their time and energy. And can you imagine siblings saying, you know, giving that the alpha child giving a bill to the estate and the other kids are like, you didn't spend that much time or you didn't do this, you didn't do that. Then there's a squabble over the fees that they are paid. So, you know, and, and I think the state only gives us the guidance of, you know, you can charge the estate a reasonable fee for your services. Well, what's a reasonable fee? You know, what's reasonable to me might not be reasonable, reasonable to someone else. My sister was asked to be the uh, <laughs> trustee for my dad's estate. And my mom had passed away years before. So it was my dad's estate that was being settled. And it could have been done pretty quickly, but we had one brother and he was very anxious for his money. Mm -hmm. He was very anxious. And he kept calling and calling and saying, when are we gonna get it? When are we gonna get it? When are we gonna get it? And my sister said, you know what? I'm tired of him calling. I'm gonna drag my feet and he'll get it when he gets it. And as she delayed settling the, uh, estate the market went down and we you know didn't get as much whatever it wasn't that much anyway can i just tell you but there are those kind of issues and do you really want a family member a neighbor a, a whatever a church member under that kind of stress so i think that there are it's that something you really should consider because i would say using a private fiduciary or a corporate fiduciary is that on top of the trustee? The, right now, you would be the trustee. Most of you, if you have a trust, you are the trustee or the co-trustee. We're talking about a successor trustee. If it's a couple, then if one of the couple passes, the other one is the trustee. And when that person passes, then the successor trustee would take over. But and they, the distribution. But this year, and the, the, the last... Um, the fiduciary has a couple of roles. They can just step in when the last trustee has passed away and do the distribution. Or if the trustees or the last trustee becomes disabled or just doesn't want to pay their bills anymore or you know have that responsibility, then you can ha have the uh, fiduciary company step in at that time. Too. And become the trustee then? 
Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you know what do they charge by a percentage? There is a percentage, and I would say normally what I've seen in Arizona, it's about one percent. There are some who charge per transaction. There are some who, you know, all different ways. So I don't want to speak for those companies, but I've seen it about one percent of the estate. You're like, well, is that just the money, or is that the estate, or or what is that? So that would be a conversation for you to have with the company. Um, most fiduciaries do not charge to be assigned to be uh, a successor trustee. They don't charge until their services kick in, which might not be, you know, until you both pass away. So you can have a trustee and a fiduciary. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So and they're they're well. The fiduciary would become the trustee when the last person yeah. passes, but you could also be a trustee and use their services to help you. Maybe you want yeah, to they, them to pay they, your bills, so they you could, could have that process to uh, spread out the money that needs to be yes you die. Yes, uh -huh. yes, and they wrap everything up and, and do that. So I think it's a fee that's well worth paying, depending on. Um, you know how you feel about that, but coming from a fractured family, I would have much rather had some fees paid out. It would have been much less than court costs. And like I said, families have been fractured for years. It's heartbreaking to be an artist. Yeah. Um, the information that we got off of this today, I just made this up today. And any of you on Zoom, this can't see where I'm at. This handout <laughs> would be available to you. But again, I got this from Ed, just it was off of Forbes and Mature Money, what to look for in a fiduciary. But I think this is, it gives you good information. And then if you want to look at this last page, this is what you should know before you hire one. And I think this is good information. Uh, what type of service do you provide? Do you have errors and emissions? What are your office hours? You can go through this list on your own, but I think it's that take it with you and interview two or three and get someone that you feel comfortable with. And if you have any questions about that, and I'm sure, what was the company was going to be here today? Managed Protective Services. Managed Protective Services. I know that Benavia vets who they put in front of people, and so that will, would be someone who you might want to, uh, you know, check with. They're located in Youngtown. And are they a private fiduciary? Yes. Yeah, I would yes. assume yes. I I am so in the gray as far as what a fiduciary does. Right. right. Yeah. Do you have a list of private companies? We have a list of some we've worked with. I think that Benavia would have a list as well. And if you I um if you wanted to contact me and get some information on artists, I would be happy to do that. But again, I just, I see this happen so much to estates that I, I would just highly recommend you looking for a private fiduciary company who can, and, and maybe a corporate's going to be fine. Maybe you're, you're fine with your power of attorneys and, and all of that, but just just don't have a fractured family. <laughs> There's a donut shop in Glendale down at West State. It's called the Fractured Journey. <laughs> and I never understood what that had to do with donuts. Kind of a cute name. But when I heard the name Fractured Family, that just really stabbed me in the heart because of my experience with that. So for my own family, I've got three kids, adult kids, they get along great. But I get something as simple as um Gave, I, I got a piano, a new piano, and so I wanted to give the one that I had to one of my children. And it was a special piano to me because I got it to meet my mom. And so, uh, anyway, and but I had to make a decision which child to give that piano to. And I chose one that had um, girls coming up that I, you know, I thought they would do piano lessons and such. So it was just something I did. So I get this text from my son. After it's done. So, who decided that that piano would go to sell? And I said, I did. So, but you know, I thought, oh, there, I'm, I'm changing my 
Um, but as a trustee right now, I'm not going to have my kids go through that. And so I have a private position as well, just personally. And then also, when, or how are we for time? We are doing fantastic. Okay. Yep. So um, my sister asked me to be her uh, successor trustee in her estate. And sometimes you hear that title and you think, oh, that's, wow, that's a real honor. And, and um, but just within, the, the, anyway, the last little while, I went to her and I said, I love you. And I'm actually her financial advisor, which would be a conflict for me to manage her money and with her fiduciary. So I would have to get permission from my broker dealer to do that with family. But um, I said, Please, I don't want to be your successor trustee. I said, I, I love my nephews. They've married very interesting personality spouses. I don't want to deal with them. I want to be Aunt Pam. I don't want to go through court with them. And I said, so I am not, I'm going to decline from being your successor trustee. You can have a trust protector. You can name a trust protector in addition to the fiduciary if you want to add a third layer in there, or if you want to use your uh, child, a brother, and or uncle, you can also assign a trust protector to oversee them. But that's just kind of another layer of things to get through. So um, I just I hope that my own personal situation has helped you. And it's my view from being a financial advisor that I don't want to see your family fracture more than anything in the world over stuff, over money, over whatever. So I think, yes, there is a fee to it, but I think it's a fee well paid. So with that, if there are any questions, um, if I can answer them, I will. I know having a private fiduciary company answer would be better, but... Um, any questions? This is perfect, Pam. And it, it also talks to how complicated life has gotten oh. around this subject is, you know, to throw in something personal. We, we no longer live in nuclear families. I mean, no. a lot of us have remarried, if not once, several times. Mm -hmm. um, I My father remarried, so I was the executor of my stepmom's estate. Oh. And people I never saw in my life came out of the woodwork. They do. And so that's why it, it attests to your statement of, you know what? If you can afford to spend the money, do it. Get and somebody if you can't else. Can't afford it. Do any good anyway. Do it. It's better than again fracturing your family. And if you go out of here with nothing else, it's do I want to fracture family? Certainly. Well, we got a few questions that came up already. Oh goodness! I have to get close so I can see them. That's it. The phone number of the speaker. Can That's I get that? We will actually. Let me. Uh, Step ahead on everybody. This is being recorded today, as some of you already know. So when we it'll take us a couple of days to edit it down on YouTube and uh, make sure that it's easy to watch, but then you can watch it again at your convenience. But all the information about Pamela and her company will be there as well. All the handouts, I'll make sure I get these online and send them in the email as well. So everything you see today that I'm showing in front of the screen, or we've been waving it, even the comics I'll put on there that you yeah, can see those. So it'll all be there and I'll have all of Pamela's contact information as well. Okay, so the phone number will be coming. Do we need a trustee as well as a fiduciary? If you have a trust, you are the trustee in most cases. Um, and so the, and if you name a child as a successor trustee, then they become a fiduciary whether they want to be or not, or whether they even understand what that is. So uh, yes, and to that question, you could also be the trustee, have a co-trustee assigned at, or a, a co-successor trustee assigned from a fiduciary company, and they could take over for your responsibilities when you, um, before you pass, if you wanted them to, or after you pass in the distribution. So I hope Betty that answered that question. Here's another Becky. What's the difference between a successor trustee and a fiduciary? A successor trustee will take over when the last trustee has passed away. And when a successor trustee takes over as the trustee, they take on a fiduciary obligation 
to settle your estate. A fiduciary in and of itself could be a private fiduciary company, like we talked about, or a corporate, some of your big name trust companies, or actually also, in this case, I'm a fiduciary, but I'm not the kind of fiduciary we're talking about today. So uh, the next question, 1% of what? Normally it's the estate. So 1% of the estate. But that's something I want you to um, confirm. That's a discussion yes. you have with your fiduciary. Yes, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then is a percent charged on the basis based on the value of the trust, bigger dollars equals? Yes, usually if the trust is bigger dollars or more complicated, depending on how complicated it's going to be to distribute and do, are they, um, is there going to be distribution from the trust over a few years or is it going to be all done at once? So again, those costs are, it depends. And I hate that answer, but it really does. And that's when you want to have um, conversation. Can I question about that percentage? I have looked at a couple of fiduciaries and they charge an hourly rate versus a percentage is there a, a one that is better than the other or is it or is it because of the state or the size of the estate you know that is depending on how they oh sorry i'm talking to the speaker not the right speaker <laughs> that's uh, all right that depends on how they do their billing so some uh do do it for an hourly rate and if you didn't have a lot going on the hourly rate might be much less for you um, others choose to do the percentage, or sometimes I've seen them have a choice between it. So again, it just depends. And sometimes the larger your estate, the percentage gets less. Does that make sense? So again, more of a conversation with who you talk to and, and how they handle their fees. Thank but again, well worth it. Thank you. Thank you. Sherry, pay your monthly bills for you. I have a question here, can the fiduciary pay your monthly bills? If you choose to enact their services before you pass to do things like that, yes, absolutely they can. Or if you become incompetent. Yes, yeah, the, the fiduciary, and once they are designated as uh, the trustee, yes. Mm -hmm. In that case, they don't charge until they start doing it. Yes, yes. Most companies, there's sometimes there's a, a little initial fee to set up. I'm sure they have paperwork. Not often. A lot of them just, they only charge when the services are engaged or approved. Did everybody yes. hear that question on Zoom? Yes. Okay, terrific. Yes, sir. Uh, what Derek is talking about now, I'm just curious to know if... Um, we hire a fiduciary to take care of our monthly bills. Do they come over our house or how is that worked out? You know, I think that you would have, that they would have access to, to your, you, you would have an agreement made up and they, they would have access to pay the bills, um, design the, the checks and such, or the bill that go to them. So, but again, so all the bills go to them. That's right. But they have, they're in charge of taking care of their Could be. They uh -huh. have access to uh -huh. the whole estate, the money. Yeah. yeah, so if you have someone um, paying your bills, I believe the bills can go to them. But if you have questions and you don't know who to call, I have a, a couple people who would be happy to visit with you. I do know that the folks who are supposed to be here today, they do have in their office what's called case managers. Mm -hmm. So they do, they go out of the office and meet with you. Yeah, so, so like cleaning whatever your needs are. Now, if they come to your house, I'm sure there'd be a little bit more of a fee. But what was the name of that company? Again? Managed Protective Services, MPS. And Managed agents. Protective Services is who uh, was supposed to be here today. Yeah. So hopefully I'm representing them. I think you're doing an amazing job. <laughs> any other questions? Let me get up here. I don't. Nope, nothing in the chat box. I don't see anything. So are um, we going to get a list of some private fiduciaries from you or someone? Will that yes. be on the YouTube? Actually, I will send out a list as well if you have requests because 
Um, I just happened to be looking at that list I this morning. Like your list. Okay. Like your list. Yes. So yes, so, but I do have um, some that we have worked there, with. There is actually an association in the state of Arizona which oversees the private fiduciaries. Awesome. So if they can be registered with that and part of that organization. So and they've already had some vetting done. Yes. There's rotten apples in every industry. So any other questions? I, yeah, I think I have everybody. If not, we'll, I'll go over there. Okay. The Somebody attorney, else still had a question up there? The oh, I was gonna, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. The attorney who has done your will or trust can also provide that information. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Now, I am um, making a, I have an attorney for my daughter who's on disability, and they told me that I should not have the same fiduciary for her as for myself. Is that true? I would go by what your attorney said. I think that makes sense. Okay. All right. Because you should each, someone who should be looking out for her best interest and what she wants and needs, and also have someone independent looking out for yours. I think that makes sense. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Everybody who's out there in Zoom world, don't be bashful. <laughs> if you have questions, while we have Pam here, I think is the time to ask them. <laughs> Can you hear me at all? We yes, hear you, Joe. Okay, finally. Yeah. I'm sorry I was late, so I may have missed that. But just from personal experience, we had what we thought was a fiduciary company representing us. And they said that they were fiduciaries right from the beginning. But we found out as time went on that they were uh, directing us to accounts and different things where they got the highest commission. And we decided then to, to face it and let them know that. And they got very upset. And so we decided to go somewhere else and found out that they really were not a fiduciary, even though they were saying they were a fiduciary. So uh it's just kind of a warning sign and i think you've covered some some of that about how to check out a, a company that say they are fiduciary because i think people throw that term around very absolutely loosely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what's interesting is you say that is you know obviously i've been doing some research since four o'clock yesterday now two two factors jumped out the most is number one if i was a fiduciary i would be broadcasting that on everything that I have. So on my website, you know, on, on my business listings and things like that, because that's important to people because that's exactly what they're looking for as a fiduciary, as opposed to somebody who's can function in their own interest, right? And number two, if they're part of that organization, then you'd like somebody mentioned earlier, they're already vetted. And, and so if somebody's telling you they're a fiduciary and there's no signs of it on their business card or on their website or anywhere, then they're probably not a fiduciary. Well, even if they are, ask, ask for proof yeah. of that fiduciary. Because okay. like yeah. Joe said, that, that could be dangerous because you don't find out right off the bat until things might be going a little bit south that they've been working in their own interest, you know, because the more money they make, you know, that's what they're in the business for. And anyone who is directing you to where they might make a higher commission, that is actually the opposite of a fiduciary. That's right. And they could be fined and, and you know, whatever the case may be. What so. government agency determines a fiduciary? For me, it's the SEC. SEC. But that's for me because I'm an advisor. Yeah. But for the private companies, that's a great question. I don't know. And we'll find out. Yeah. Because if they uh, have it on their. Yeah, anybody can print up cards now and put on there oh, what so. they want. So, yeah. yeah. And what holds up in a court of law if they have to sue them? Because they right. weren't a fiduciary. Right, right. That's a great question. I'm glad you brought it up. And we will research. Mm -hmm. Good. Yes. Let me know. <laughs> Historically, things grow by happenstance. In other words, accidental things and that kind of thing. And we kind of, you know, when they started building the highways in America, uh, they had no licensing and they had no uh, speed limits and, right. and all that stuff gradually came to the East, first of all, 
And then in the West Coast, and then the places in between, like Montana, where nobody lived, it just came in the last 50 years, you know, 30 years. In some right. Yeah. right. So anyway, so use your, your own due diligence. And again, talk to two or three different companies and um, make your best judgment. And then, like I said, we could we have got the people we have vetted, and Jay does too. So I think that's really important. Yeah. On that note, I'm, I know it's, it's 120 now. We've kind of gone over our time, but I'll, I'll go ahead and call this formally over. But, you know, I, it's, it's up to you. It's 120? It's 120 right now. No. Yes. Okay. I'm so sorry. It's, I, it's no. amazing. No, that's fine. No, really? it's, it's usually what happened. But uh, you're free to stay on. Like I said, I just wanted to say that, that like it's being recorded. So I will send an email out to everybody and let you know. Uh, when that's ready, and there'll be a link to it, so you could watch again at your convenience. Um, we actually have another event tomorrow on the 20th through our fund development group called Keeping Charitable Giving Simple. So if you want to check the website or the information on that, that's available. And if you don't have anything else to do this weekend, there is a, an event up in Sun City West called Motors and Meals, which is kind of one of our sister nonprofits, and they deal with transportation services. So that's a lot of fun. So if you want information, let me know on that. But um, thank you so much for joining us today. I apologize for being a little bit disjointed with our, our original speakers not being here, but I think Pamela did an amazing job right. and uh, covered a lot of things. So I appreciate it. So 